today we're going to talk about what and how to decide mm -hmm. the learning part of it. I have Anshita with me and uh, I will straight away start with something which I really want to know. And through this episode, I want my audience to know. So Anshita, there are a lot of things for testers in the market right now coming. They want to learn this. They should learn that. They have to learn it. If they will learn these, they'll go to the next level. All these things. Uh, but out of this entire information that we have, uh, with your experience, can you guide us on specific direction or, or maybe what will be the four direction for that matter mm -hmm. uh, to my episode? What will be the four directions that people in testing industry should accept and to learn for? Okay. First of all, thanks for this question. This is a very basic but very important question, which I think uh, all of us should know. First point, I think we should be clear about our basics. So today we can see people learning a lot many, you know, uh, difficult technologies, all the tech stack, but they do not know the basics. So I think first of all, clear your basics, clear your fundamentals. Second thing is uh, go towards automation testing because without, with only product testing, you know, uh, it no no matter this is a base of everything but we should mm -hmm. also know automation testing this is required in every organization today because people yeah. are moving to reduce their manual work so when you have your manual it will help you in you know speeding up your efficiency your testing the so second mm -hmm. thing i would say automation testing yeah. third is explore more about different type of testing it's mm -hmm. not you should not be limited to maybe only web testing or api testing learn about how you can perform mobile testing also, what is API testing, how you can do API testing, because today uh, people generally know like freshers, which I have seen as from my experience, they move towards web automation or web testing, mm. but they do not know the basics, which is API testing. So right. I think API testing is very important. They should also focus over there. And uh, fourth one is, I would say uh, these days QA ops is something which is coming up. It's not something new, but this is something uh, which is expected from testers these days. So it's, I mean, gone are the days where you have to only do, you know, develop a framework or do, you know, now you are responsible for end to end. Right. Involving DevOps, setting up the framework from the scratch. So gain some knowledge on that area also. So I think, yeah, these are the four areas which I would say, uh, like I would conclude for testers, uh, yeah. four things which you should be focusing on. Right, I think that's an appropriate way of uh, covering everything in the four uh, slots. Uh, but then yeah. this leads me to another question. Like you said, there are a lot of things needs to be learned. Automation, you mentioned. Web and API testing, mobile testing, you mentioned. So mm -hmm. plenty of things that needs to be done. So in that yeah. case, how to decide what should we learn next? How to start? How to complete? Mm -hmm. How to go to the next one? So what, what will be the strategy or what should be the approach for somebody who want to learn? It's important to understand what is next. So my question is, what is yeah. next? How to decide that? Okay. First of all, wherever you're working on in your organization, just understand the need. What is the need over there? For example, mm -hmm. uh, there's a need for API testing, but maybe you are doing some mobile testing, which is not used. So first of all, you know, keep your preference as per that, what is required in your company. And if you have extra bandwidth, of course, go for things like mobile testing and explore more things. Yeah. Second thing is uh, analyze the trends in the market. For example, today, if we see there are multiple automation tools available in the market, codeless, you know, uh, with code, they write Cypress, many tools are there. So explore the trends, explore the market, analyze what is the trends going on today. If, you know, the community is good or not, do not directly jump to a tool. Explore first, analyze first the market trends, then go towards it. Then I would say uh, the other thing, maybe you can also do, I mean, uh, apart from the research and this, for example, our what do we do as a tester? You have to search for a job. So yeah. I would say, check the job, job description, check the mm. market, what all the tools which are required. So I think that's a very practical thing, which I, I also prefer. I mean, yeah. given the area which I'm working in. So check what is trending and what is expected in that market. Maybe yeah. that can help you. Maybe in one region of the world, Selenium is going on, but in others, maybe Cypress is more trending. So maybe that will not be helpful for you if you learn. So right. explore, check the job description of the companies uh, which are there in your region. Uh, then maybe follow some good YouTubers or people on LinkedIn and check check what they're posting because they can also keep you updated. By following yeah. right people on, on platforms like LinkedIn, you will get to know what is, you know, new tech chat which is coming in the market. Yeah. So yeah, these are the four ways which you can 
follow and see how you can how to learn and move forward yeah i mean the fourth one was very strong uh, suggestion to be honest <laughs> so yeah st- what to study requires to study something and then to decide yeah. what needs to be studied perfect uh so after all these things people are also talking about that you need to focus on uh shifting your uh, strategy towards the direction so basically people say shift left yeah yeah, uh, yeah. shift left for an organization for a product goal we understand that but what according to you shift left for a tester should be so shift left is not something which is new but this is i would say uh, become famous from quite a lot of years now but yeah. uh, i think it's very important because today most of the companies they say you know tester is responsible for the product quality that's mm-hmm. not the case product is everyone's responsibility i mean the quality is everyone's responsibility yeah. so shifting left means for example right from the requirement phase if you involve testers in the early stages maybe you will have some scenarios or edge cases which you might have missed as mm-hmm. a po as a bo a ba so that case involving tester testing in the quite early stages it doesn't mean involving tester at every stage but involving testing these yeah. two are different thing so right. maybe more unit testing if you follow test pyramid where they say unit testing should be you know more cases should be handled at the unit test cases then integration then end to end test cases so these strategies if we follow and then uh, following bdd tdd it will help us following shift left testing in any any organization and it will definitely improve the quality of the product so i think yeah. that's my idea of shift left and how we can implement shift left in any of the company yeah, a critically important yeah. statement shift left does not mean early tester but early testing so whoever is yeah. doing it they they should start testing it uh, absolutely agree on that point mm-hmm. uh, anshita we have uh, seen you on your youtube channel uh, where you majorly cover cypress i am a big fan of how you teach this thing uh, we are also following you on um, linkedin as a community the desk chat community already follows you and everybody from the community uh, i just want to uh, learn from you if you can guide us what are the references that you have as your go to options or if you want mm-hmm. to learn or if you want to suggest anyone if they want to learn what should be the mm-hmm. uh, go to references uh, from your experience Okay uh I think my first choice will always be following uh, some great youtube channels mm-hmm. so like navin automation labs i have been following that from quite a lot of years and yeah. i have personally learned and grown a lot in my yeah. in my experience in my career uh second thing i would say follow some good technical blogs for example mm-hmm. there are there are blogs by landrates which are really very very detailed yeah so it's not only you know writing only you know small line of code and then But then posting or publishing your blog it's not like that they are very very detailed those are very useful and uh, like people like ttc the community like ttc if you follow such kind of communities so i think over there also when i was part of your uh, telegram chat so i could see you know many people asking questions so you get to know for example if i'm not working with any of the tech stack now but i know there are people yeah. you know who are asking such kind of questions and this is something some new tech stack which is coming in the market so i think following these kind of things will be really helpful and uh, i personally follow all this stuff and i i i really suggest people should follow many i mean just do not follow all this what i am suggesting but follow from whom you can understand maybe right. what is suitable for me might not be suitable for others so others way of teaching is quite different so maybe you right. can see what is suitable for you and then you can follow us for that it definitely provides a direction of how people should focus on learning and how to decide where to spend their time when they want to learn so yeah a good youtube channel a very good technical blog and definitely a very yeah. good, these provide some good things perfect i think uh, a lot of things which um, we wanted to know because it's a short cast we cannot cover everything but still i i i'm very thankful to you that you covered Uh, a lot of uh, aspect that i wanted to uh, be you know known to my audience but any last uh, conclusive statement from your side to the community to the audience that are listening uh, as an experienced tester or as a beginner what they need to focus or anything that you want to share from your side uh, i would say just keep learning 
maybe just spend 10 minutes or 15 minutes every day but keep learning and let's see if you're following any um creating a framework or following any any uh, video or course or training just mm. try try to create your own github profile and start updating it because your github is actually so LinkedIn is definitely one of the profile platform which is useful for you, but GitHub is basically where you can showcase your projects what you have done, your technical <laughs> knowledge in case of projects and all those stuff. So I will say keep updating your GitHub profile. That's very important, and keep sharing your knowledge also. When you share your knowledge, then you get to know more things. People ask you questions, and then you understand. Okay, these are the things which I should be knowing. About. Maybe I didn't think about this way. So yeah, uh, I think this way you can learn and uh, keep sharing. Of course. learning has no alternative but a very good point you made learning is like mean, like sharing is new learning so if you will share you will definitely yeah. learn from that thank you so much anshita it was pleasure talking to you i am sure people will learn a lot and then uh, it's like four questions but a uh, very good insight so that uh, it it covers uh, a lot of lot of thing for my audience so thanks a lot for being part of this episode uh, i appreciate your time thank you Thank you Sachin thank you bye bye